Welcome to the Hoarder House Project. This was the first time I visited the property in person before I decided if I wanted to make an offer. What was I thinking? I really don't know. A tenant wouldn't let anybody inside to view the house, so this was all I had to go off of. I assumed, rightfully so, that the inside was going to be just as beautiful as the outside, so I made my offer accordingly. I didn't know what or if any of these treasures you're looking at were staying or going after I bought the house, but I just knew to expect a few dumpsters begging to be filled in my near future. This was the day I took ownership of the property and was finally able to explore the inside of the house. As you can see, sadly, they didn't leave me the Airstream. I was actually hoping that stayed. Not sad the Winnie was gone. I could have done without the Mazda, but it is what it is. Uh, this is just a quick view of the back side of the house. Plenty of beer cans and mattresses to now call my own. This was the big moment, the big reveal as it were, and I was not disappointed. Three people, two cats, one dog, and numerous free-range rodents occupied this beautiful 1983 three-bedroom, two-bath, 14 by 66 single-wide with that large bump out that you can see right there. Vintage 80s wall paneling there, classic. I was glad this wood stove was there as it was the only reason this house wasn't full of mold, you know, which just would have been another fun thing to have to deal with. I know you're jealous of that legit bar pool table there. And there's one of about seven TVs that were on this property. And there's one of the many Natty Ice beer cans that I was able to fill up no less than a dozen contractor bags with. Underneath the counters were one of the least fun areas to clean out. The fridge that had been without power for over a month and full of food, that was probably the worst to deal with. Going over to the back hall. I almost went through trap door number one there. Just checking out the central heating unit that had seen better days. Going past the included washer and dryer that for some reason was full of dozens of empty beer cans with the laundry and the dryer there. Going here over trap door number two into the master bath. Again, classic 80s garden bathtub you'll see in many mobile homes. Plenty of National Geographics for your reading pleasure. And now we come into the back master bedroom. In the corner here we have a high quality water heater, at least according to the previous tenant. You had to let me know it came out of a high rent building in Bellevue, Washington. So fancy. Who needs a mattress when you can have the back seat of a minivan? And surprisingly, all the window sills in the house were in pretty good shape. Even though the windows are small, I do like uh, that the wooded views that you get out uh, through the back end of the house here. I mean, there are houses. It is a rural HOA, so I do have neighbors. But I do have one of the larger lots in the neighborhood, so that was nice. And as you can see there, the bump out uh, threshold is being held up by a farmhouse chic tree limb. So we're going to need to do extensive work to the framing of this. Not to mention the ceiling as well. Or the roof trusses. Or by a stove, I see they had no issues chopping firewood in the front room. Coming to the coat closet, I was left with all the board games I can handle. Many a family fun nights to be had. Uh, bedroom number two here is super tiny. I'd say it's about 10 by 10. 
but obviously plenty of room to store plenty of things. Coming into bedroom number three, we get to traverse trapdoor number three. I was super impressed with the amount of cobwebs in this room. In this bedroom house, the second bathroom in the house. Under that pile there on the left is a toilet, if you can believe it. And we have a corner vanity and sink over there. You can kind of see. And the shower star was, stall was only half full of garbage. Overall, quite the classy joint.